Hello viewers, welcome to AWS reInvent 2024 Highlights. This is John from CloudTech Insights. In today's keynote session from AWS reInvent, which is ongoing, uh, Swami was announcing a couple of feature additions to SageMaker. Is SageMaker Lakehouse as well as SageMaker Unified Data Studio. What are these changes and what are the impacts? And this is what I want to discuss in this session. To put it simple, SageMaker Studio is an IDE or a framework where you can write your data analytics code as well as AI code under one roof. Is it just that? No, it's more than that. It is a combination of a code development environment for the developers or the builders plus a data governance environment as well, which means it combines the features of Amazon Data Zone into this Data Studio. So Data Zone is integrated into Data Studio so that gives you a seamless data governance experience under one roof. Again, is it just that? No, it's also adding some of the code versioning tools. It's also adding the AI tools like Bedrock onto it. So now you can play with the Bedrock tools and discover some of those assets within the data zones. So this is a path towards a data as a platform experience where customer can log in from outside using SSO login, which means they don't need to have an AWS account, can log in and see all the assets under data zone and decide what to pick, what not to pick. And if they are developers, they can use the notebook to develop the code. If they are AI or machine learning team, they can come and pick and choose and play with some of those models, just like how you play with Amazon Bedrock Playground. You can play with SageMaker Unified Data Studio. Before SageMaker Data Studio, for analytical workloads, you have to use EMR or Glue notebooks. And for any AI code development, you have to use the SageMaker notebook. Now it's all combined under one roof. And it's also opening up a new a persona, which is more of the business users, they can come and log in using SSO ID and identify some of those data assets that's available, run off some of those quality checks, some of those features that's available with data zone under the same roof. So this gives a holistic experience, the data as a platform experience for both business as well as builders. Now let's take a look at what is a SageMaker Lakehouse means. In the past, we used to have the S3 table or the iceberg hoodie or deltas table handling transactional data residing on Amazon S3 under Glue catalog. So all the access controls were handled by Lake Formation and it gets exposed to data zone and that's how you handle the access control and access to the data itself. And in Redshift, you have a separate catalog which used to maintain the Redshift tables the DDLs, etc., and all the access control is happened in Redshift catalog. So there are two catalogs to maintain data between Amazon S3 and Redshift. The Lakehouse solves that problem. It's now combining both of these information together, have a unified catalog to access the data underneath both Amazon S3 tables with, under the open table formats plus the Redshift tables, the access control, and the catalog will be unified. And this is a game changer. Now, from SageMaker Unified Studio, you can access the SageMaker Lakehouse for both analytics as well as AI requirements. And this is huge. This means AWS is heading in the right direction around the data analytics as a platform where everything is under one roof, enabling significant improvement in the builder experience and bringing all the powerful tools under one roof. So without much discussion, let me show you how that unified data studio looks like. So before going to the console, I just want to quickly show how the data lake and Redshift works within AWS. Each of the components have their own catalog, which means all the table and information stored in each catalog. And the access control is also handled through their own ecosystem, especially AWS Glue is handled through Lake Formation and Redshift is handled through Redshift uh, access control system. And in the new and the future SageMaker 
lake house architecture both will be handled under one roof which is the aws blue catalog and the lake formation is capable of handling the access control to these tables and all the tables will be visible in the blue catalog the redshift as well as data lake tables which is built on iceberg hoodie or delta will all be visible in the blue catalog along with the redshift and these two catalogs will be uh, separate within the blue catalog but you can access all the tables combine information etc on stage make the lake house and definitely you can use it for both analytical as well as ai use cases and then the grand scheme of things uh, where the stage maker platform comes into picture which is the unified data studio comes into picture is it's the stage maker along with ai ml operations and tools like SageMaker and bedrock combined with the data governance tool which is the data zone uh, and uh, also infrastructure and code versioning tools as well and amazon q experience everything combined is unified data studio so you'll be able to access all the information you'll be able to run your ai ml workloads analytical workloads uh, also have a solid uh, governance model using data zone uh, and the users can access uh, the Unified Data Studio uh, through an SSO login, which means they don't need an AWS account. All they need is an email and a, a password to log in. Um, and that login is pretty secure and access the data zone and look, look out for data. So the business users can come in and look for data to play with. Uh, builders can come in and look for data to uh, uh, transform data, run data quality checks, etc. So there are a couple of uh, options for both business as well as the uh, builder uh, community. With that said, let me show you how the uh, console looks like. Uh, you'll have to set up the uh, SageMaker platform and uh, how it looks like overall. And I will deep dive into some of these sessions in the future videos. So let's quickly go to the console. And within the console, the keyword that you need to use to get onto SageMaker Unified Studio is SageMaker platform. So that's what you should be using. And that takes you to the Unified Studio. Uh, and this is the SageMaker platform right here. Click on it, takes you to the same page that I was showing. And then it gives you two options to create the Unified Studio domain. And it, everything goes by domain. So each business units have their own domain and then a corresponding data zone. You can create both of these options. So let's start with the Unified Studio domain setup. You're always, you're given a quick setup, uh, recommended options and with manual setup with the custom options that you can select so in this quick overview i just want to go with a quick setup and you have to choose the domain name you can have your own business unit like a ml team or something along those lines and then a sage maker role which is already created or you can create your own uh, service role all these information um, you can create your own existing access control role and one important thing is you got to pick your vpc here and all the subnets underneath and the ones that is provided you can also select the bedrock access model so whichever models that you have already have access to it gets inherited into the unified studio so i have 16 approved models and then i can pull that information into it and at the same time i'm also getting some of those SageMaker bedrock management role which helps you access some of these models from the bedrock console so once you hit con con uh, continue it takes like good five minutes to create domain and uh, uh, for the ease of the, this video, I already created the domain and this is how SageMaker Unified Studio looks like. And you have the options where you can see the data catalog. So it pulls the information from blue catalog and data zone. And under one roof, you can see, hey, you, what are tables that you want to see? It's under the data catalog and generative AI playground, which lets you the same playground that you allows you to play with the models uh, in bedrock and then you can share the data generative AI assets. So if you have a model that's custom built, you can share it across the team and then play with it and, uh, and understand if it fits your requirement. And there is an option to create the notebook for ML and generative AI development. And there's a uh, notebook and a SQL query engine, which is powered by Athena, EMR, Glue, and Redshift. Uh, and uh, you can access the SageMaker Lakehouse through some of these query engines from here, which means you can access the S3 table and the uh, Redshift table under one query engine, which was more of a federated style uh, in the past, but, but now it's combined under one roof. And again, generative AI application development, you have a separate uh, chat agent, and then you can publish the data in a data governance platform, which is powered by DataZone, which means you, 
both the business as well as the builders have have options to work with the data and AI platform. Overall. And on top of that, you can select the project. So for each of the project within the domain. So let's say you have a business unit called finance within that finance domain. You can create multiple projects within multiple teams and collaborate with each other, etc. And once the data is ready or once you have produced the data, you can publish it to the uh, data zone. Again, it comes under one roof. Uh, and that data can be shared across the finance domain or you can have a cross-functional uh, data sharing to the other sales domain as well. So uh, the project is a subset of domain where you can have their, your own team working on specific projects. So this is the overall view and I will be working on some of the features uh, that's shown here and we'll deep dive into some of those aspects in the next few videos. So with that said, I'm wrapping up the session. And in the next few videos, I'll deep dive into some of these aspects. It's just that I've set it up and how to play with it. And we'll deep dive into the ML, AI development, Gen AI development, the playgrounds, the governance, etc. So these pieces are very important to understand and how you can get a holistic experience over data analytics as well as AI within AWS. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the latest information from AWS reInvent. Thank you. Signing off, John.